you are now tuned in to enter at the virtual Bible study with Bishop Gary L. Hall Sr. We are happy that you chose to join us on this evening. Remember to like, share, comment, and ask questions as we go through tonight's lesson. And join us in giving with the GiveLify app as well as Cash App. Don't just watch. Worship with us from wherever you are. Now, let's go into worship and learn more of God's goodness and mercy. Well, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in and allowing us to join you in this part of your day's activities. Glory to God. The Bible says all our times are in God's hands, and it's so nice of you to give God back some dedicated, uh, focused time with, you, with him through Bible study. Glory to God. The Bible says study to show thyself approve, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. And so we're so grateful tonight that we are able to, with you, and with the Holy Spirit, study the Word of God. And, and uh, I say this, good is not enough when better is possible. And so we're in a process of becoming better and better. And so listen, the Bible says, in all our ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. So I'm going to ask that you allow me to lead you in a word of prayer, amen, that he might direct our time here tonight as we study his Word. Oh, Heavenly Father, we do bless and do thank you for all that you've done and all that you're doing. We humble ourselves under your mighty hand tonight, God, that you would exalt all of your people in due season. God, we thank you for the anointing that will destroy yokes and remove burdens. God, you said, beloved, does not yet appear what we shall be, but you said, when he shall appear, we shall be like him. And so, Father, we pray that you would make us more like you. The Bible says in Romans 8, 28, for we know all things are working together for good to them who love him and to them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he predestined that we might be conformed to the image of his son. And that's what our prayer is tonight, God, that we be more conformed to the image of your son. Not to be conformed to the world, but that we be transformed by the renewing of our minds. And so, God, we thank you for the season of prayer. Thank you for the privilege of prayer. Thank you for the opportunity to pray. God, we're asking, we're seeking, and we're knocking. And we thank you, Lord, that you're not going to cut short our expectations. Thank you for hearing this and all sincere prayers. We pray in faith, we pray believing, and we ask it now in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Well, again, thank you for allowing us to share with you in this uh, interesting time we're living in. I want to say hello to all of the West Jacksonville family members and the Cathedral of Faith family members and Christians everywhere. We're one body with many members. Yeah. I'm so glad to have my friend with me again on tonight. To Glory you. to God. He's a, he's a great spirit in Christ Jesus. He's somebody who loves God. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I say to sometimes people, Bishop, you know, they said uh, in Matthew 7, it says, did we not, did we not, in your name, did we not? I say it's one thing for you to know his name, but does he know your Your name? name. (laughs) And so I want to thank God that I believe God knows your name. And I want to ask you to take a moment, introduce yourself, and then we'll go into the study. Go right ahead, Bishop. Well, God bless you. Thank you very much, Bishop Hall. I'm just blessed of the Lord to be in the house of the Lord again. It just looks so wonderful and feels so good (laughs) to be in the house Mm -hmm. of the Lord one more time. Thank you for this privilege to share with you in the word of the Lord tonight. And I'm just blessed to have you as my pastor and to be a partner in this ministry. I remember hearing you say something sometime back that you wanted partners, not necessarily yes. members. Yes. And I yeah. caught on to that and yeah. what you were trying to say. And yeah. I, by the grace of God, <laughs> I'm going to try to be a good partner. <laughs> That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah. Well, listen. Call someone, text somebody, uh, do whatever you all do. Let somebody else know that the West Jacksonville Cathedral of Faith Bible Study is on the air. You can go online at westjacks.org and uh, pull up the Growing in Christ likeness. We're studying Lesson 22. Lesson 22. Amen. Growing in Christ likeness. And so tonight we're talking about patience versus restlessness. Patience versus restlessness. Glory to God. The thought under that is accepting a difficult, what is patience? Accepting a difficult situation without giving a deadline 
to remove it. Now that's something. That's that's a that's a big boy statement, Bishop. Yeah. Not giving a deadline, accepting difficult situations without having there to be a deadline. You know, sometimes to keep it real, we sometimes uh we say we're waiting on the Lord, but you gotta wait patiently yes, yes. on the Lord. When you're when you're calling everybody, when you're worried about it, when you can't sleep at night, are you really waiting patiently on the Lord? Go right ahead, Bishop. Yes, you know, this idea of patience to me means, you know, that ability to wait on the trying circumstances, yes. you know, to bear up under the pressure, under mm -hmm. trying circumstances, and you accept that without putting a deadline on it, you know, that requires patience. Yes. And then the question of survival during the interim period comes into yes, mind. You've yes. got to survive until you get to the point where you get an answer or where you have uh, been delivered. Yeah. So you got to survive and waiting patiently on the Lord. And, you know, waiting without murmuring and complaining. Complain. Yeah. I don't yeah. think God get any glory out of that, <laughs> murmuring and complaining. Mm -hmm. So, so we, we pray that uh, God will give us that inner fortitude. Yeah. The inner strength that we need to yeah. uh, make it through. Amen. And patience is really indispensable in our walk with God. We, we got to have it. Yeah. It's part of the process. You never become a, a spiritual uh, finished product without having patience. That's so true. You, you never make it to that That's right. end. So we thank God that for, for patience and yeah. we allow patience to have its uh, work, a yeah. perfect work in yeah. our lives and bringing us into uh, Christian maturity. There you go. Mm -hmm. Now here's a word. Mm -hmm. It's not a biblical word, but it's a word that we all know. And it's the word drama. 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 All of our lives have drama attached yeah. to them. Yeah. It would be so nice. Job said it this in, in, in another passage. He says, a man that's born of a woman is of a few days. Indeed. And they're full of trouble. I like to say they're full of drama. <laughs> yeah. And because we are not in this world by ourselves, you're going to have some drama. drama. I'm saying that so I can relate to the audience. Yeah. You're going to have some drama. drama. But the way you survive drama, mm -hmm. according to the Bible, is that you develop what the Bible is calling patience. Mm -hmm. Another word is steadfastness. Yes, yes. You've got to learn how to be steadfast. You've got to learn how to not give up. Have some stick to itness mm -hmm. because listen drama will find you drama knows where you work drama knows what school you attend drama has a key to your house I better leave it now <laughs> but you cannot escape drama, drama. Jesus says I, these things have I spoken unto you that you might have joy for in this world you're gonna have tribulation drama, drama. but be of good cheer <laughs> I have overcome the world. I'm helping somebody. You don't know it. Yeah. But you've got to learn if you're going to be a Christian, you're going to be tested. And many times the test will in also known as just drama in your life. Somebody feel what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, so we've got to learn how to survive in the midst of, not because of, but in spite of the drama in our life. Go ahead, Bishop. Yeah, yeah. I was just thinking, you mentioned the word testing, and I was thinking today that God allows trials and tribulations in our sure. lives. Sure. Uh, we read it a few minutes, the trying of our faith. Yeah. I see that as God's uh, method of spiritual quality control. Yes. yes. And, you know, when we are tested and wait patiently, and come out with victory on yes. the other side. Yes, yes. You know, then yes. that determines what we were made out of. That's right, that's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. Well, you mentioned that verse, and we may as well go ahead and get into it now, Bishop. In James chapter 1 and verse 3 and 4, it says, Knowing this, that the trying of your faith mm -hmm. worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, mm -hmm. that she may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Verse 3 again, knowing this. Actually, it's hard to read this verse without reading verse 2. <laughs> verse 2, James says, count it all count joy. It. That's it. See, that's the thing. 
count it all joy. Now, I'm bringing this out, Bishop, for a reason. In life, you're going to have difficulties, drama. But James, the brother of Jesus, says, first thing, you've got to count it all joy. That is to say, all means all. What we like to do, we like to count things and put them in categories. This is good. This is bad. This is good. This is bad. James says not to do that. James says take everything and put it under the good column. Mm -hmm. Learn how to be thankful. Learn how to appreciate. Learn how to be grateful. Yes. Because even on your good day, you're being tested. And even in your worst day, it's a test. If you belong to God, am I right, Bishop? Yeah, yeah, if yeah. you're in God's hand, mm -hmm. God will not allow anything more on you than you can bear. Amen. The Bible says, amen. Uh, there is no temptation, testing, yeah. taking you but such as common oh, to man. men. But God is faithful, right. who will not tempt, test, try you above which you're able yeah. to bear. And he will, with the temptation, provide a way of escape. And I think one of the ways of escape is through patience. That's true. It's through this steadfastness. That's true. You know, one scripture, and I'm getting happy here, but it says, be steadfast, yeah. unmovable. Um, Always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know, your labor is not in vain in God. Go right ahead, Bishop. And you, you mentioned count it all, George. So uh, James is saying, you know, for us to consider, consider. it. Now, when, once we get the big picture mm -hmm. of the end results, yeah. it's working in my behalf, yeah. it's working in my favor. Wow. See, if I can, you know, see down the road that... So I'm counting joy now yes. because, you know, God got a purpose in this. That's right. And the purpose is always working in my favor. favor. You know? That's right. And so I've got to use a little mind over matter here, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. and, 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 and consider that. Yeah, yeah. And the next, benefit. you're right, Bishop, mm -hmm. because now we're in verse 3. He says, knowing this, there's something you got to know, mm -hmm. that the trying, that is the testing of your faith. Mm -hmm. It's your faith that's being tested. Now, I'm going to bring it. You know how I am. Uh, when I'm watching TV, sometimes I, I come across this show called Cops. And many times they'll find a little substance. Mm -hmm. And they'll look and say, you know, this might be drug. But they have to test it right. to see if it is, in fact, a drug. Mm -hmm. We claim to love God. We claim to have faith. We claim to uh, obedience to him. But for it to be genuine, mm -hmm. for real, it has to be tested. Be Faith tested. has to be tested. Has to be and many tested. times the, the things we think of as drama in our lives only come so as to test the quality of our faith. Yeah. I tell people this, people tease, watch the tease, people tease, the devil tempts, but God tests. Mm -hmm. People tease. The devil tempts, mm -hmm. but God tests. I could teach you, but not tonight. Yeah. But there is a testing that God reserves for himself. Yeah. And he only tests us because we are about to be promoted. That's now, I'm going to leave that. but yeah. Because the only time God tests you is because he's trying to determine whether you are ready or not mm -hmm. for what he has for you. God always has more yeah. for you than what you now have. Yeah. I believe that. But you've got to understand the need for testing. Go right ahead, Bishop. Yeah, well, you see, uh, an untested faith is a faith that cannot be trusted. There you go. It, it yes, cannot sir. be trusted. Yes, so true, true, true. the trying or the testing of your faith is really going to reveal the quality, the of, quality your faith, of your faith. Right. What kind of faith that it was. So the yes. trying of your faith, that's God's method. Of, of seeing what your quality is, his method of spiritual uh, quality control. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what I yeah, had in mind. Yeah. So then, then the testing reveals how committed yeah. you are to what yeah. you profess. Yeah, yeah. You know, I hear you talking, but how committed, how loyal are you to God? That's what good. is your allegiance to That's him? right. That's and right. so I need to know that, and the only way I can know that, God is saying, is to test you. Yeah. Now, when we talk about faith here now, we're talking about that biblical principles yeah. on which you stand. Yeah. You know, how 
willing are you? What are you willing to go through uh, to be able to show that you? Give me the proof, right, right. the evidence right. of the faith right. that you have. So, so that, right. that faith is being, and, and, and James said, knowing this, now we need to be aware of this. Yes. We need to understand that uh, we've been picked out, we picked on in a <laughs> sense, <laughs> that trials and tribulations are coming our way. As you mentioned earlier, yeah. Bishop Man is born a woman, a few days are full of trouble. Right. You know, he, he's prone to trouble as a spark is to go up. That's right. And so then, so we, when once we have that uh, expectation yeah. that it's coming my way, yeah. let me evaluate it. Yeah. Uh, what can I learn yeah. from it? Yeah. Allow it to be teachable yeah. moments from it. But in the meantime, I'm patiently yeah. going through yeah. this. And, and God has given me the strength to That's survive right. because right. as you mentioned over there in uh, First Corinthians 10, 13 about he wouldn't allow anything to be honest that he didn't know that we couldn't he survive. Right, right. And he is faithful. Yeah. That blesses me yeah. in that scripture. God yeah. is, is faithful. faithful. Somebody need to catch on That's to right. that. That's right. God is, is faithful. faithful. I don't care what it is. God is faithful. And the good thing that we have going for us is that he loves us. There you go. <laughs> he loves us. And so nothing much. shall separate us from that love. From that love. When you were talking, I thought about this passage in Deuteronomy 8, and I think it's verse 2 or 3. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, and he led thee the way, the, the hard way, that mm -hmm. he might know what was in thine heart, mm -hmm. whether you would obey him or not. Mm -hmm. That's a test. He could have he taken them the short way, he but he took them the long way, mm -hmm. and it was difficult, but it was to prove them. It was to test them. It was to reveal to them the quality of the faith they claim with their, in their hearts. You know, I sometimes say you can make your mouth say anything. That's true. You make your mouth say anything. You know, we say I love you or, or we praise the Lord with the other saints, but God reserves the right. Now, I'm going to go back to something I said a moment ago. The reason that God tests you is because he's considering you for the next level. All right. He always has something more for you, but he's not going to give you anything. Wait for it now. He's not going to give you anything you're not ready for. It's, how is it a blessing for you to get something you're not ready for? God's going to see if you are ready for that blessing. I could teach it, but not tonight. I'm going to stay with this lesson. Yeah. Now watch this, Bishop. <laughs> Let's go to these character points. <clears throat> First character point, patience is a virtue. Uh -huh. The key to consistency. Sometimes, and I like what the author here said, he says patience is like a speed bump in life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the test of patience. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we're just going so fast, going, I'm, I can see it, I'm almost there, but then God allows something to come in to, to slow you down yeah. or to cause you to, to, to think seriously or to think differently about what you are going, what you're trying to do. Yeah. And so we mustn't give up, quit, throw in the towel. It's just the test. Yeah. The test to see whether or not you have the patience or how steadfast you are or how determined you are mm -hmm. for what you are pursuing. Glory to God. That's good. We know the Christian life is a life of pursuit. Pursuit. We've got to pursue. Now, note the Bible doesn't say God has to have patience. We're the one that has to have patience. God's working his plan. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't always tell us what he's doing. And it's when we don't understand what he's doing that we've got to be patient, that we've got to be steadfast. Amen. Go right ahead. Now, you, you mentioned speed bumps, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, speed bumps. That's the primary purpose of speed bumps to slow you down. Yeah. And then sometime yeah. in life, we have to slow down and sometimes we have to drive according to the conditions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have to slow down and, and understand that life is real. It has just ups and downs. We're not butterflies floating from one blossom to the other. <laughs> you know, life has challenges. Mm -hmm. and, and so then we have to practice faith. Yeah. You know, good, you good. have to practice faith. I that's mean, good. train your inner man and your mind to, to use patience. Yeah. Let that 
be your first impulse, yeah. you know, to, to use patience. Yeah. And you, do, you can train and develop yourself uh, to the point where you will, you know, have that, that response of patience yeah. before you begin to, you know, throw in the towel yeah. or surrender. So you got to learn how to maneuver yeah. on the highway of life. That's right. You know, you, 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 you got to do that. I like what you said mm -hmm. when you say slow you down. Mm -hmm. I was uh, talking to the graduates about three weeks ago, the 2020 graduates, and uh, one of the things I said to the young men and women that were graduating, I said, you got to learn how to slow it down. Yeah, yeah. You know, when you, when you slow it down, you notice things you wouldn't have never noticed. Mm -hmm. You smell, you notice the flowers, you notice the small exactly. detail. And sometimes we can be in such a hurry in life that we don't slow down enough to it, uh, acknowledge the beauty of what God is doing. Mm -hmm. We're in such a hurry to get to our goals, aim, and objectives, but we didn't consider and allow the blessings of God to come uh, little by little. Yeah. But because you were moving so fast, the Bible says, he that uh, believeth shall not make haste. Mm -hmm. We are in too big of a hurry. Mm -hmm. And right now, during this COVID pandemic, if nothing else, it has slowed us down. Slowed us down. It has made us uh, to appreciate things we were ignoring, Amen. things that we were taking for granted. Let's be honest. And so now we are, we're enjoying our families more. Amen. We're enjoying our home-cooked meals more. Amen. We appreciate our loved ones and our support groups, all of those things. Mm -hmm. But it's God had to make us, uh, bring us to a place of patience. Amen. Bring us to a place of waiting on him. Bring us to a place of enjoying more of what he has. The next point, Bishop, get Before a better. Get there, Bishop, go right ahead. Mm -hmm. This idea of slowing down, we have to understand that testing our faith or trying our faith, God has a refinery process going on. Mm -hmm. You know, and the refinery process takes time. You know, uh, in First Peter 1 7, it says that the trial of your faith being much more precious than that of gold that perish. Though it be tried in the fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus. So we're going through a refinery process. Yes, yes. You know, when gold is put in the fire, you know, gold is not burnt to be melted. Mm -hmm. So you don't burn the gold. But right. the refinery process removes the impurities yeah. from, from the gold. And so when God melts us, then he's able to pour us in the mold he wants us to be in. So true. You know, and, and so then we think about that, you know. So we, we practice this patience, you know. And life, to me, is a series of adjustments. Yeah. You got to be flexible. That's right. You know, you, you got to be flexible. Deal with it as it comes. If life gives you a lemon, make some lemonade, you That's know. Right. So whatever you have to do to survive, yeah. you know, at, at the trying. You're being tested now. You're being tested because uh, God wants not only to see what your commitment is, but you learn something about yourself, yeah. you know, teachable moment, yeah. you know, and, and you begin to grow and to mature. It takes patience to mature spiritually. Amen. Yeah. So true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we get a better view. That is, don't focus on temporary things. We get a better view. We kind of dealt with that. We do what you can do. That is to say, uh, stop worrying about things that you have no control over. You know, people who walk in patience, uh, they learn, and I love this, this, I call it the serenity poem. Say, God, give me uh, the ability to change, to accept the things that I can change. Mm -hmm. Give me the, the courage to uh, to change the things that I can and then give me, grant me the wisdom to know the difference. Yeah, Bishop, I, I, I got that in my notes. It's like, God grant me the serenity to accept the things yes. I cannot change. Yes. Courage to change the things I can. Yes. And the wisdom to, to know, know the difference. The difference. Yeah. That's powerful. Yeah. yeah. I think sometimes, Bishop, people who struggle with this characteristic of patience, godly patience, they are operating under an illusion that they're in control. Mm -hmm. And I call it an illusion. <laughs> We're not in control. Uh, 
in every instance. There are times when God uh, brings these tests in our life. Uh, I, I'm thinking about Abraham now. Abraham had so wanted he and his wife a child. God promised them a child. Isaac was born, mm -hmm. and they were enjoying the blessing, the promised child. Right. And then all of a sudden, God tests Abraham sure. because he had more for Abraham. Mm -hmm. He said, now, offer now thy son, thine yeah. only son, That's Isaac, cool. on the mountain. That was a test. Yeah. Abraham, as you all know the story, he took the child the next morning, three days it took them to walk, and I don't think he slept one night. But he went ahead and obeyed God, went up to the mountain, offered the child, and just before he took the child's life, in fact, I may as well tell this part of the story. The servants, Abraham had so much faith in God, he said to the servants, you all stay here. The child and I will go and sacrifice, and the child and I will return. Now, Jesus, in Luke's gospel, the Bible says, Abraham, this is so powerful, Abraham saw my day. How and when did Abraham see Jesus' day? Up on that mountain. Just as he was being asked to offer his only begotten son, guess what God was going to do 2,100 years later? God was going to offer his only begotten son. Guess where? On the same mountain. And by faith, Abraham saw his day, Jesus' day, and rejoiced. <laughs> but that's what, that's what you got to see when you're being tested. You have to, you have to understand, you can trust God even when you don't understand fully what he's doing. But it's because God was preparing Abraham. When God took Abraham through that test, and when that got over, and he said, after these things, the Bible said, God said, look up. You see these stars? I'm going to bless you. Yeah. I'm going to make your name great, just like the star. <laughs> look down. You see the sand of the sheesh? Because God was going to give him more than an Isaac. Glory to God. Yeah. But Abraham did. He had what he wanted. Glory to God. Yeah. You may think you have all that God wants you to have, but God has more for you. More for but you. in order for you to get the more, you're going to have to be tested. And you see, Bishop, Moses had a similar situation. The Bible yes. says that Moses, you know, he survived because he saw yeah. the invisible. Yeah. You know, e even in his situation, yeah. Yeah. he was able to look beyond yeah. where he was. Yeah. And he, he, you know, and he saw Mm -hmm. Something greater mm -hmm. and more powerful than than his circumstances. That's right. That's right. And, and, and that that requires patience too, because this thing about patience. How you know how can you be patient when you're hurting? Yeah. You know that adds a new dimension to yeah. it. You know anybody can be patient when the conditions are ideal. Right. Right. But when you ask me to be patient when I'm hurting. Physically, uh -huh. mentally, I'm being tormented in my mm -hmm. inner man. Mm -hmm. You know, then that takes on a different yeah. dimension. Yeah. And then it, I am in a position uh, that, you know, of urgency. Yeah. I, I want some relief now. Yeah. yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> and then that's why James, I think, brings this out. I had to bring in that verse too because he says, "Count it all joy," because we have a tendency, Bishop. Maybe not you. Maybe just me. But we have a tendency to skip certain things in our life. Mm -hmm. Say, I'll count that joy, but I won't count that joy. Right. I'll count this this joy, but I won't count that joy. James says, count it all. all. Consider all of it. Mm -hmm. I love this passage in Ecclesiastes that says, uh, in the day of prosperity, rejoice. Mm -hmm. But in the day of adversity, consider this, mm -hmm. that God has set one over against the other, that you might know there's nothing after God. Isn't that something? <laughs> that we've got to consider. Count. That's what you said. Yeah, yeah, count me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now let's, let's pick up something because we'll get to it. But James chapter 1, verse 3. Now, let's go with the same book, James chapter 5 and verse 10. He closes his book. He started off teaching us how to deal with unpleasant times. Uh, it's a test. Then he uses an example in his later writings as the book closes. James chapter 5. Stay with us now. James chapter 5 verse 10. He says, take my brethren, the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. Now watch this. He says in verse 11, behold, we count them happy which endure. Mm -hmm. Ye have heard of the patience of Job. 
and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and tender in mercy. He brings up this character, Bishop. We're talking about patience. Mm -hmm. But James says, just what I advised you at the beginning of the letter, let me give you an example at the end of this letter. All he right. brings up this character we all know mm -hmm. called Job. Mm -hmm. Now, he says, consider the man Job, the yeah. patience of Job. Mm -hmm. And we know all of what happened in Job's life. Right. But what we've got to think of, and he says it very clearly, he says that the end of it, Job had patience, but God's ultimate goal or end for Job was to bless him. Yeah. And that's, the, that's what incentivizes us during our difficult times. Never let your circumstance, your situation, try to teach you what God's purpose, plan for your life is. It's just temporary. That's the point. It's just temporary. God, the Bible says in Jeremiah 29 and 11, God says, I know my thoughts about you. They are thoughts of good and of peace to bring you to an expected end or a brighter future. God is bringing us, even though it may be some difficulties along the way, God never forgets where he's going to bring you. You mustn't forget where God is trying to bring you. And so what I would like to say to our listeners, that as we consider this patience piece, let us embrace it. Let us ask God to work patience in us and allow that, uh, that way our, li our lives, pardon me, will turn out the way mm -hmm. God meant for them to turn out. Because what the enemy would like to do, remember I said, people tease. The devil tempts. Yeah. God tests. Yeah. And if we mistake a test of God as a temptation, yeah. we might lose our way. Yeah. If we mistake a test from God mm -hmm. as a tease from people, we can be distracted. But let us see our life as, 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 a, as a, a journey that we're taking yeah. that God has complete sovereignty over and he will bring us to an expected end if we don't faint, if we don't faint. Mm -hmm. The Bible talks about balancing patience. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about it. There are three points. We must exercise discernment. We must think sometimes creatively. And we must wait alertly. Mm -hmm. When we exercise discernment, that is to say we understand the deeper reason why things happen. The deeper reason. Uh, Ecclesiastes 3.1, to everything there's a time. To everything there's a purpose and a season under the sun. God has a bigger purpose. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very important that we discern the purposes of God. That's how we maintain patience. We must discern the intent, that the, uh, the, the outcome that God had in mind. Mm. Not only that, Bishop, but we must think creatively, right. approaching things from a new perspective. I like to say sometimes we win, sometimes we learn. <laughs> but it's a win-win. <laughs> and lastly, Bishop, and please comment, we must wait alertly, being aware of what is taking place around you mm -hmm. so that you can respond. You know, the Bible says that we're not just to pray, but we're to watch. watch and we're to watch. Yeah. I like to throw this in, Bishop, just before you make your comment. You know, sometimes what we're going through, I like to say to people, it's not always just about you. It affects other people. Yeah, it does. Yeah. There's a domino effect. It affects your family. It affects your, your loved ones, the people that are in your acquaintance. So sometimes your patience mm -hmm. or the test that you're going through is God's positioning you to, to release a greater blessing for people that are connected to you. True. So, so we really do have to not be selfish. That's true. We've got to, you know, those of you who have matriculated through post-educational secondary institutions, you've been to school. But look at the, the, the lifestyle, the quality of life that you now and your family enjoy because of your sacrifice. Because you were patient, because you didn't quit, mm -hmm. because you didn't throw in the towel, because you didn't give up. Hmm. So it's something to think about. Go right ahead, Bishop. So when we talk yeah. about balance, patience, go ahead. We, we don't want to abort your future. Yes, yes. It's yes. a good thing that God has for you by prematurely taking things into your own hand. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and as you watch and as you're being alert as you're going through whatever crisis you're going through you, you you're being aware and then to get to the root of this thing you 
you know, we have to understand, too, that Satan heads a kingdom that's hostile to the, to, the, to the people of God. And so when we're translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God, dear son, the Bible describes him as our adversary. Mm -hmm. You know, your adversary, the devil walks to and fro. You know, so he's got a part in some kind of way in everything that's, mm -hmm. that's uh, hostile to me and that's not good for me. So I am, you know, waiting patiently, but I want to use some wisdom in the process as well. You, you know, I don't want to do anything that's detrimental to my own, you know, plight. Yeah. And so then when we think about that, you know, we have to be sober, we got to be vigilant, yeah. you know, and uh, but the devil lays traps, yeah. you know, he lays yeah. traps, he sets up snares, you mm -hmm. know, to get us, you know, he is a uh, uh, the master of using the schemes and mm -hmm. wiles. Mm -hmm. The Bible says we're not ignorant right, right, of his right. devices lest he get the advantage, advantage. of us. Yeah. And so we, 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 we're aware of what he's doing. He has a strategy. Yeah. And we need one too. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know, we have to counteract what yeah. he is doing. And then we got access to divine assistance. Yeah. yeah. God helps us in yeah. our efforts and our yeah. endeavors. Yeah. I think you're absolutely right, Bishop. Uh, we, we, you know, I'm going to quote a scripture, but then I want to challenge you. The thief cometh but to steal, kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Now, there are two lives here. Last time I ministered on patience, I remember using this thought, how not to have hell on earth. See, the devil wants life, your life, to be a miserable life an unhappy life, uh, a life that is uh, horrible. He doesn't want you to have dreams. He wants to turn your dream into a nightmare. Right. But it's through patience. Mm -hmm. It's through you submitting yourself patiently to the plan and purposes of God that you escape the hell on, life, the hell on earth. I know we all believe in heaven and hell. But you can have hell before you go to hell mm -hmm. if you're not patient, if you don't learn how to be steadfast, if you don't learn how to let. That's why James says later, let patience have her work, that yeah, you yeah. might not, that you be uh, patient and entire wanting nothing. That's what you want. Yeah. But if you aren't and aren't living a steadfast life, a patient life, you have something less than that. I call it hell. But you can have a horrible so-called life here on earth if you don't learn how to take your time, if you don't learn how to give God time, if you don't learn how to be steadfast yes. in your walk with God. Just wait on God. Yes. Don't be in too big of a hurry. Now, some of us, not you, but maybe just me, we've all been uh, victims of discontentment. We get in a hurry. And, of course, there's systems like marketing and advertising that create, we didn't talk about this, the restlessness in us, mm -hmm. that's done on purpose. Yeah. The devil loves to make us restless, restless right. unhappy, dissatisfied, discontent. We feel like we've got to have more. We've got to have better. We've got to have different. Not that there's anything wrong with what we already have. I know I'm talking to myself now. <laughs> but, but we just, we'll get rid of something that's perfectly good. Yeah and think we convince ourselves, I need something more. I need something newer. I need something better. But I would encourage us to watch that restlessness mm -hmm. because I don't know whether it's, a, it's of God or not. The Bible says in 1 Peter 4 and 1, try the spirit to see whether it be of God. Yeah. And I don't know if restlessness is of God. Uh, I'm not saying we're not to have ambition. Right. I'm not just saying that we're not to be progressive. But I, I, I really question whether restlessness has a real value in the lives of God. I know somebody talking back to me, and I agree with you. But I would say try that restless spirit to see if it's God. Yeah. Well, you see, Bishop, I was thinking about that today. My antidote for restlessness is the peace of God. Yes. It's, mm -hmm. You know, Jesus left us a legacy of peace. Mm -hmm. You see, my peace. It's not like 
the world's peace. My peace is really beyond understanding. Mm -hmm. The human intellect cannot understand my peace. So that peace gives us uh, a calm demeanor. It, 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 it helps us to keep our composure. Mm -hmm. And uh, that that's the peace of God, you know. Yeah. And yeah. that peace, uh, you know, guards our yeah. mind yeah. and our heart, you know. And, and, and that's that's the thing that uh, we, we want to, you know, and, and as I was thinking here just a few moments ago, uh, patience, that's, that's an underlying thought that comes to my mind. We have to, through the power of the spirit, mm -hmm. try to suppress the tendencies of the flesh yeah. in order that patience has a fertile ground to operate in, right. you know, because these human tendencies, you know, the, 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 the spirit of your patience mm -hmm. because you get to a point where that spirit of retaliation will, will try to rise up, but then you've got to be able to endure. This thing about endurance yeah, comes yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. To endure. How can we bear up on the pressure? Yeah. You know, and so we have to think about those yeah. things, too. You know, the scripture says, Bishop, in patience, possess you your soul. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In patience. That's an interesting phrase. Yeah. In patience, possess you your soul. Yeah. Now, the soul, not to be long, is made up of your mind, your will, your emotions. Your mind, your will, and your emotion. What you want, what I think, what I feel. What I want, what I think, what I feel. Mm -hmm. But here the Bible says, it's through this virtue of patience that you're able to master your soul. Sometimes we don't think right. We don't want right. We don't feel right. True. So you can't trust your soul okay. to always give you what God wants you to have or lead you to the end that God has for you, the plan that God has for you. So what you need, I need, we use, God uses the, the virtue of patience mm -hmm. to subdue your lustful soul, okay. what you want, what mm -hmm. you think, what you feel. Oh, that's too much. Yeah. But, but, but it's, it's a beautiful thing when you see its role. That's why in James he says that she might not be, that you be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. I, I sum that up in this way, that you develop godly character. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been talking about, we call it growing in Christ's likeness, but really all of these are characters of Christ, characteristics. Yeah, yeah. And patience is one of those things mm -hmm. that he modeled for us. Mm -hmm. In case you're interested, you take for an example, Jesus was the incarnate word of God, meaning right. he was the word made flesh. Right, right. So when you want to get an example of anything that God wants for your life, you look at Jesus. Jesus is the expressed image of God's will. What would Jesus he do? modeled patience. Yeah. He was never in a hurry. True. Amen. I think it was in John 11. When Martha and Mary said, listen, you need to stop what you're doing and come now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Your friend, our brother, he's sick and he may not survive. Exactly. The Bible said yeah. Jesus tarried two more days, yeah. got there four days later. On purpose. On purpose. <laughs> Amen. And do you not know? I better leave it now. I'm getting happy. Sometimes patience is how you get the best outcome. You wouldn't think it. You've been to restaurants. I've been to restaurants. I get there. You get there. You were there 10 minutes before me, and I got there 10 minutes after you. My order gets to my table before your order. Mm -hmm. Well, when you look at my order, I got a hamburger. Yeah. It didn't take but a few minutes to yeah. cook a hamburger, but if you order a steak, yeah. yours going to take a little longer. Yeah, exactly. And sometimes we forget to think that it's taking, my blessing may be taking longer than yours, mm -hmm. but when it comes, it's going to be worth waiting on. But you got to be paid. Only patience help you get the best out of life. And Go ahead. And you understand Jesus can't be late in my mind no, whenever he show up. That's right. He's on That's time. Right. How That's can right. he be late? Jesus not late. Whenever I get here, I'm, yeah. I'm the same that you said my brother, Martha said my brother wouldn't have died. Well, yeah. you know, if, you, if I'd have been here, your yeah. brother yeah. wouldn't have died. Yeah. I'm here now. Why yeah. can't I res <laughs> resurrect? And Bishop, the key there is this. <laughs> What's your, your point? Is we abort the blessing that God had in mind mm -hmm. by being in a hurry sometimes. Yeah, I think in the text he says, 
this was this way so that God might be glorified. Mm -hmm. You know, the discussion about, yeah, yeah. do you believe you'll see your brother again? Yeah, yeah. He said, this is for the glory of God. And if we really want the glory of God to, to, to be known or seen in our lives, mm -hmm. Jesus said in Matthew 5, let your light shine, that yeah, men will yeah. see your work, mm -hmm. and give God the glory. the glory. So in some ways, in order for God to get the glory out of my life, I must understand the importance of patience for God to get the yeah, glory. Yeah, yeah. You know, I often talk about good, better, and best. And I, I often say good is not enough when better is possible. Well, better is always possible with God, but sometimes we're just impatient. Yeah. And we so we to, never experience the better. <laughs> we have to understand that God's got the big picture. Yeah. yeah. You know, he's got the big picture, and then our patience, you know, he's like uh, an author that paints a picture on the scroll. He knows yeah. what's on the scroll. Yeah. But you only know as he unfolds it. And then God uses time to reveal what yeah. he's already predetermined. He's already predetermined. Mm -hmm. Our last little series of statements here, Bishop, mm -hmm. I will, and they're declarations. And we'll go through them and then we can talk about them just before we close. I will wait my turn. Wow. I will make the most of my spare time. I will not interrupt. I will accept what I cannot change. And I will not complain if I do not get my way. If we have patience, I'll wait my turn, Bishop. Yeah, then Bishop, <laughs> you, you, you're coming up against a human tendency. Now, I was born with this thing, me first. <laughs> Don't get me started. I'm going me first. Me first in line. Me yeah. get the biggest slice yeah. of cake, everything. Yeah. So you are saying that this is going to require some self-denial. Yeah. And I think these declarations should be accompanied with commitment and conviction. Yeah. You know, yeah. when you declare something, you should be committed to it. Yeah. And you should have a conviction about your declaration. Bishop, have you ever flown in a plane? Yeah. You ever been boarding a plane? Yeah. <laughs> have you ever seen people, even though their seat, you got to go, get on the plane according to your seat assignment. Exactly. But people will crowd the door of getting on a plane. Yeah. First thing, I will wait my turn. Yeah. And you're not even in that category. It's not your zone boarding, <laughs> exactly. but it's just an interesting phenomenon. Yeah. We are restless. Yeah. We're eager. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, Bishop, we are, we are in a hurry to our own detriment. That is true. I could testify. That is true. There have been times I couldn't find my keys. Just look, you know, I found them eventually, but it slowed me down for a minute or two, looking for my key mm -hmm. or my sh some other item. Only to get down the street and see a bad accident I've had that, that experience. just happened. Yeah, I've had that experience. But God, yeah. God slowed me down mm -hmm. just a few minutes. Mm -hmm. I know you won't receive it, mm -hmm. but I believe God slowed yeah. me down yeah. just a few minutes yeah. Yeah. to help me avoid mm -hmm. that, that terrible yeah. event. Amen. You've had any situations like uh, that, yeah. Bishop? <laughs> and God spoke to me. You know, and it said to me as much as I got your back when you don't even know. <laughs> Through danger seen. Yeah. And unseen. Yeah. yeah, I got your back. And, and so we just have to slow down. Slow down. Speed bumps. Patience. Yeah, patience. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And I will make the most out of my spare time. Now, that's something we're learning real good right through right here. Through here. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Make the most out of our spare time. We got a lot of time on our hand now. Yeah. God slowed us down. And now we've got to redeem the time, Bishop. Yeah. Because the day is evil. You know, time is precious. Sure. I remember you saying, Bishop, anybody that wastes your time, wastes your life. That's <laughs> you true. Know? I still believe it. So time is precious, and time cannot be recalled. So you've got to make the most That's out right. of it while you right. can. And That's try right. to anticipate, uh, try to have vision yeah. in what, what you're doing. You know, try to get the big picture. Yeah. You know, so when that is gone, you covered as many of the bases That's as right. you could. And Bishop, in our position, and you, you've been a jurisdictional bishop, and I say this, I hope everyone will understand. The next one is, I will not interrupt. I've said to people who were, were expiring, who had ambition, mm -hmm. 
I said, it's nothing wrong with your ambition, but you don't want to interrupt what God is doing in your life. That's true. Don't be in too big of a hurry. Right. Don't try to skip the process or skip the line. There's a reason why you need to, I know I was watching baseball, uh, the re, you know, I've been watching repeats, games that have already been played last year. Well, one thing you know about baseball, once you take a, get a hit, you must run to the first base, second base, third base, home. Yeah. In my youth, I would hit and run and got so excited about getting home. I might forget to touch one of them bases. Yeah. And I would slide in at home and would begin to celebrate only for the umpire to call me out. Yeah. Now, somebody better catch my meaning. Yeah. Sometimes we are in such a hurry to get home, we don't want to touch all the bases. Yeah. We don't want to go through the process. My son likes to preach about process a lot. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's important. It's necessary for us to arrive at home Safely, go right here, Bishop. Yeah, you, 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 you in the end zone spiking the ball, <laughs> and the man said you, you stepped out of bounds at the twenty yard line. <laughs> so you down you the know end you're zone, right, Bishop. Celebrate, you know you're right, and you disqualified sure, and sure. ran <laughs> down to the end zone. And, and then you know our lesson was talking about cutting corners. Yeah. Be careful about cutting corners. Mm -hmm. Now, when you cut corners, you, you you're missing part of the process. Now you can either Go upstairs on the steps, or you can catch the elevator. Yeah. But if you walk the steps, you know that's a time when you you you, you experience teachable moments, and you don't arrive prematurely. Yeah. You know you don't arrive prematurely. So we don't want to cut corners right. and miss what God is doing in our lives and how He is growing us and maturing us and bringing us to that place that he wants us to be so right. we can be the finished product, right. you know, right. lacking nothing, nothing, you know. And Full so, of godly character. Yeah. This <laughs> last point, Bishop, and then I'm going to let you close with final words in prayer. I will not complain if I do not get my way. I will me, not complain. Take me back to my marble days. <laughs> <laughs> get my marble to go home. Go ahead, Bishop. God bless you, Bishop. I certainly enjoyed this session, you know, and uh, we could go on and on. But yes. I thank you for allowing me to participate here with you tonight. And we pray that uh, the people of God have been blessed, that their walk with God has been enhanced, that there's something been said tonight that, you know, that uh, will help them to uh, have a better walk with God, to help to develop the character. Develop patience. Yeah. Develop patience. <laughs> Amen. And we just gonna have to wait and let God do what God do. Amen. And we're gonna pray now. We're gonna pray. Yes. Thank you so much for Father, we just thank you for this thank privilege you, and opportunity to look in your inspired word, yes. your will that you speak to us. We thank you for this virtue of patience and yes. God we know that patience is not in abundant supply mm. but we ask that you will give us the mind to seek after patience and let it have its perfect okay. work in our lives now bless us now bless those who have been viewing all our members and our saints wherever they may be those who are sick those who are discouraged strengthen yes. them yes. lift up that bow down here and help yes. them to look to the hills yes from which cometh our help. All our help come from you. And it is in you that we put our trust. And so we leave here walking in your favor and walking in the power of the new creation. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for worshiping God with us today. Be sure to like, share, comment, and turn on notifications so that you will be informed as to the next time we post. Remember, giving is available via the GiveLify app and Cash app as well. We hope that you were fed from the word of the Lord today and that you allow your light to shine on each and every day. On behalf of Bishop Gary L. Hall Sr. and First Lady Mary Hall, thank you for worshiping God with us today.